Hey guys, it's Luis Inavaldi with the Cinecon E24 controller that I've created. Uh, we're going to go through the controller and Reaper. This might be a longer tutorial or not necessarily a tutorial, just a demo. Again, this is just the initial, you know, uh, beta version of the firmware. So we're not, you know, releasing this yet, but I just wanted to show people what it can do so far. Um, as you notice, the bottom screens are showing you the track name on the orange bar. And then it's stating that it's showing you the track volume and that's the, the reading. And then it's got um, an area where it's going to be able to s show you whether the track is solo or muted. Right now, the, the left little icons are not uh, showing feedback just yet. And at the bottom, it has a volume bar, which again, is still not showing feedback. Only the text uh, items are showing uh, and we can update those. So another thing that we've done uh, on this zone that which everything's customizable, by the way, but the way we've customized it is so that the first two rows had tra uh, touch sensitivity. So if I um, touch this, you'll see that the track uh, one display got larger. If I let it go, it goes away. If I touch number three, the track three gets selected and the display gets larger and then it goes away. And you can do that all the way to track eight. So it's got touch sensitivity with both of these rows right now. That's the way it's set up. The sensitivity is, of course, on all the controllers, on all the encoders. Um, and notice the third row, which has the sense. So, for example, if you look at track one, when I click on it, you see that it's got some sense. Um, it's got seven sense. It goes to track two, track three, track four, track five, track six, track seven, and track eight. And then above it, you on these display, displays, you also see where it's being sent to. You know, track four, track five, track six. And you see that in orange is showing the track that is coming from. And then in white is showing the track that is going to. And then that's the volume that's being sent to, right? So the other thing that I set, which I really like on some controllers, is when you press the encoder down as a button, it uh, resets the value to the default value. So for example, right here, we're going to increase the volume of track one all the way up to 12 dB. And if I click it, it goes back to zero. This is the pan on the second row. It's panning. You see that track pan as saying center. So if I pan to the right, you see that it's panning here. If I click it, it goes back to zero. And then above here, when I tap this, it opens up the window for the sends. And this is track one being sent to track two. And currently is a negative two volume. If I click it, it goes back to zero. And again, I can adjust the volume, go up all the way up to 12 dB, which is what Reaper lets you do. And then you can click it and go back to zero. Another thing that I did was for the sends, if I hold uh, shift and then actually is it, um, yeah, it's a uh, control. So if I hold control and I, and I move, I'm changing the panning of that send. And again, you can see it on the screen. Again, if I tap it, it goes back to zero. So that's a nice setting. Uh, what else can we do? Let's see. On the sends, if I hold shift and press down, it mutes the send. So you can mute different sends if you like. And if you do, I believe it was alt. If I do alt and ascend, it goes from pre fader. If you look at uh, the screen that came up, it says pre fader. Uh, setting if I press it again it says post fader so it toggles between pre fader and post fader uh, which is really nice uh, some people like to do that and then on these uh, on these screens you see that the solo uh, 
text is above, so that's shift. So if I press this, it, it solos the track. If I let go, it uns, you know, unsolos. And if I do the second button, it's going to be mute. So I'll mute the track. And if I press it again, it unmutes. And you can do that with all of them. So now let's take a look at the first um, effect that we mapped so far. So if we go to track four, so I just tap on track four to go to track four. Now notice that all the sends went away. So if I tr tap on track one, you see all the sends that track one has. Track two has no sends. Track three has three sends. Track four has no sends. So you see that cleared up over there, which is great. So track four has some effects. So if I go to shift home, uh, it's going to bring up the effect window okay and once I tap any of these I like to tap the same uh, track that I was just selected so I, I tap track 4 and you see all the screens update to show you the effect that's mapped and now the way this is set up uh, I created a default profile for this equilibrium uh, DMG audio effect and it's got eight different bands of uh, EQ. And then the, the bands are set specifically to match the mapping of the controller for them. So if you look at the first band, it's, um, uh, what is it, a uh, high pass filter. And the second one is a shelf. The third one should be a bell uh, oh and I see that the second one is not a shelf which should be a shelf um, and the way to change that is if if you look at these screens you'll see that it says equilibrium so it's the effect the second line on the yellow um, band is telling you what parameter is affecting here I'm not sure if you're able to read it but it says band one slope so because this is a high pass filter it doesn't have a cue it has a slope um, and then the next uh, item in in blue it says slope so what happens is if I change this band from high pass filter to a bell then this is affecting the slope um, and we want it to also be able to affect the the cue. So there's a way to do that, which I've set up over here. Um, and then if you do look at the green rectangle, it says uh, right, left, and stereo. So this will change the right, left, and stereo if, if we go to control. So the blue background is giving you what the shift would change, and the green background is giving you what the control button or the second button which would, ch would change so let's take a look at this right um, let's see this is affecting the frequency and you can see it moving on the screen uh, this is not gonna have a, a gain uh, there's just no gain and this is gonna the bottom one should be affecting the slope and you see that go from, it can go down to 48, go up to 48 and all the way down to, I believe, 6. And the default I have it set up to is 12. And uh, again, the frequency, it's over here. And the frequency we can, we have it set up to be 15. So and then th on the next one, uh, this is the Q, I believe. Um, this is the frequency. It's affecting the frequency. This is affecting the gain. Now, this was supposed to be set up as a shelf, and it's not. So the way to do it is if you read over here, it says type on blue, on the blue rectangle. I'm not sure if you can read it on the screen, but it does say that. So if I hold down, that means if I hold down shift and I change this, I should be able to change the type. So right now it's back to the uh, 
we want to put it on low shelf, right? So that would be the low shelf. So if I go up, it's bringing up everything there. Now on on the top, you see that in blue it says bypass. And again, I'm not sure if you can read it perfectly, but that means with the shift button, we can bypass this node. So if I hold down this and press this, it bypasses. For the first time, for some reason, that I have to um, do this, I have to click on it twice. But then after that, it's just once. But we can bypass this, and then you can see the effect of the shelf a little bit better. And then again, you can change the frequency and when you tap it, it goes back to the frequency, the default frequency, which is 80. And this, when you tap it, it goes back to zero on the gain. And the same thing, like if I were to go here and change the Q and do something like that, I could just tap it, it goes back to zero. Um, and then we can just go on from, you know, through all the bands. Um, this is changing the frequency. This is changing the gain. This is changing the Q. And again, when I press them down, it sets them back to zero. Um, and you can do that with all of them. And, you know. And you can just play with your EQ the way you want it. And again, if you hold down shift, it's changing the type. And what you really want to be on this one is there. And you can turn it off with the shift and the upper button. Um, and, you know, there you go. Turn them on. And we'll just set them back to zero. And that's a... Uh, demo of what we can do with this plugin right now we can also go back to home and that will close out all our windows and go back to our screens I need to figure out why the screens aren't updating it's still keeping the information from um, from the effect window until I start touching these and moving them and then you see it goes back to the regular screens but anyway this is the controller we have a lot of functions so far um, we don't have these um, icons that are like the check boxes we don't have those uh, giving us feedback and also the volume bar below is not giving us feedback but the texts are giving us feedback so we are able to control the text items on the screens that we have so far. So it's pretty exciting. It's working really well. And we're very happy we're going to start mapping more effects. So when people get these units, they'll be able to automatically work with them. I'm also looking at perhaps um, when I'm on the when I'm on the effect um, setup I'm thinking about doing a second page to control some of the other parameters but you know I'll do that later uh, when the time comes anyway thank you for watching guys sorry about the long video but is you know we've uh, made a lot of changes here and we just wanted to show people what the changes were thank you stay safe